Hi, I'm Tony Mastro, Aerial Sales Manager, North Region for Spartan ERV. We're here today at Voorhees Fire District, Voorhees Township, New Jersey, for a walk around of Ladder 66, a 100 foot mid mount platform quint and flagship of our aerial product range. Everything's riding on a Spartan cabin chassis. This truck is built on a Spartan Gladiator LFD with a 10 inch raised roof and an Evolution front fascia. Front cab doors include an exposed lower rear access step with a full opening front door and two steps up to the cab floor cockpit level. It includes a tilt telescoping steering column and eight-way adjustable front seat for the driver. The rear cab doors provide an extra wide opening for easier and safer entry and exit. Behind the rear cab door, we have an extra tall equipment storage compartment. In here we find some extrication tools, forcible entry tools, and a couple of fire extinguishers. Here we have an access stairway to the turntable control console. And behind the stairs, this is the front outrigger set. And here, the forward compartment. This one is set up to support the fire pump operator with various adapters, nozzles, and soft suction hose mounted in a slide out tray. Also inside the forward compartment, we have the generator breaker panel to control all the AC powered accessories, as well as the frequency meter to monitor the output of the AC generator. Here we have the fire pump operators panel and gauge panel. There's also a pull out fire pump operators platform to support the pump operator and protect them from the hazard of electrocution should the aerial make contact with electric lines during aerial operations. The upper area of the pump panel is the instrument panel, and the instrument panel is hinged for easy access to the instruments for replacement or service. This hinged access panel also provides access to the manual overrides for the electric valve controllers. The main pump panel includes a six inch main suction inlet and two two and a half inch discharge outlets. All the discharge outlets and suction inlets are controlled by electric valve controllers. The center section of the main pump panel is removable by opening the latches and removing the suction and discharge adapters. The entire center panel can be removed for access and service into the main pump area. Moving rearward, we have three pre-connected cross-lay hose beds. One two and a half inch for 200 feet of hose and two inch and three quarters also for 200 feet of hose. In the wheel well area, we have storage modules for spare SCBA cylinders, gear bag, and additional SCBA cylinders. These wheel well storage modules are built as an insert that can be replaced with different styles for different equipment storage needs. And they're totally customizable. Over the rear wheels, we have the upper high side compartments for storage of various equipment, including hose, foam, forcible entry tools, tool bags. In this compartment, we have a swing out tool panel that enables storage of various pieces of equipment on the face of the panel, on the back side of the panel, and additional items can be installed on the rear wall of the compartment itself.
The interior of the compartments is illuminated by LED lighting strips on each side to illuminate the whole height of each compartment. On the top of the body, we have an electric rewind power cable reel storing 200 feet of 10-3 power cable. This cable and a four outlet junction box are used to advance power from the onboard generator on the truck into a building to power smoke ejectors and fans. A rewind button is provided for rewinding the cable. The power cable outlet has a four roller guide to enable smooth payout of the cable from the side to the rear or to the front. At the rear area, we have a large full depth compartment set up with an adjustable shelf and a high capacity heavy duty roll out tray for heavy pieces of equipment like these smoke fans. Further rearward, we have another full size compartment set up with an adjustable shelf for some rope bags and traffic cones. Below this compartment, we have an additional small rollout drawer where they're storing ladder safety belts. At the rear end of the body, we have an access stairway to the platform. These access stairways telescope for easy access on and off the truck and stow up against the truck for transit. Moving around to the rear of the truck, we have the ground ladder storage area that can be customized for various size ladders as needed. This particular setup includes a 35 foot extension ladder, a 24 foot extension ladder, a 16 foot roof ladder, a 14 foot roof ladder, a 10 foot folding ladder, and a little giant ladder system as well as several different various types and lengths and sizes of pipe poles and hooks. Adjacent to the ground ladder storage compartment, we have the main hose bed, capable of storing between 800 and 1,000 feet of five inch large diameter supply line. In the lower right corner, we have controls, electric controls for the right side outriggers. And then the lower left corner, we have the electric controls for the left side outriggers an individual lever for each outrigger control and jack. In the center lower area, we have a manual override valve bank to control the electric outriggers in the event of a malfunction of the electric hand controller. Moving around to the right side of the apparatus, we have the rear body compartments, showing here storage for vent saws, various fuel cans, an adjustable shelf, a small slide out drawer being used for road safety flare storage. Here in this compartment, additional vent saws, chain saws, portable cable reel, some spare circular saw blades a slide out tray, and adjustable shelf. Any of these compartment interiors can be customized with a specific mounting arrangement for whatever equipment's being carried, as well as specific mounting brackets can be attached to any of the adjustable shelves to accommodate special pieces of equipment. Also inside here, you see a roll-up door protector panel, a metal panel installed in place to protect the roll-up door from being chipped by placing equipment and accessories back into the compartment. Here's the rear outrigger. And here again, the smart storage modules and the wheel well side panels set up for an SCBA cylinder, two rolls of hose, additional SCBA cylinders. And here again, these storage modules are bolt-in and they can be customized for a variety of equipment storage needs. 
Here in this upper full depth compartment, we have a salvage vacuum, some basement pumps, and some shovels. And here at the lower edge of all these compartments, we see a stainless steel sill protector to protect the painted body from chips, from removing equipment and replacing equipment into the inside of the compartment. Here again, we have the crosslay hose beds, one for two and a half, two for inch and three quarter. Moving forward, we have the right side pump operator's panel area. And in the upper area of the fire pump enclosure behind the upper panel, we have a 10 kilowatt generator. On the lower pump operator's panel, we have a two and a half inch auxiliary suction inlet, a two and a half inch discharge outlet, a five inch discharge outlet, and a six inch main suction inlet. Here again, the center section of the right side pump panel has a removable center area. And by releasing the latches and removing the elbows and adapters, the entire center section of this panel can be removed to gain access to the piping, valves, and valve actuators for service and or replacement. Moving forward, we have another full height compartment being used to store various AC powered quartz lights, extension cables, some gear bags, and a SCED stretcher. And here we have the right side front outriggers and another access stairway to the turntable and turntable control console of the aerial. Here at the rear cab, we have another full height storage compartment for storage of long handled tools, brooms, and a couple of fire extinguishers. Inside the rear cab area, we have an EMS cabinet used to store medical supplies and various pieces of personal gear. Each of the seats in the rear cab area are equipped with an SCBA storage bracket with a quick release system. Inside the officer's door, we have the officer's seat mobile display terminal, and an operator's information center for the officer, as well as an officer speedometer. On the rear sides of the cab, we have two convex mirrors intended to provide a clear view to the rear for firefighters exiting out the rear cab doors in the face of oncoming traffic. Above the officer's cab entry door, we have a rear side view camera that provides an image on the display monitor inside the cab of the entire right side of the apparatus. It gives a more wide field of view than the rear view mirror will. To activate the aerial ladder hydraulic tower system, the transmission needs to be in neutral, the parking brake needs to be activated, and you activate the aerial power switch. Now the aerial system is ready for operation. To deploy the outriggers, you open the control compartment door, activate the fast idle, extend the horizontal outrigger beams, front and rear, to full extension for normal, full capacity, 360 degree operation. Then you lower the jacks close to the ground and place the auxiliary ground plates in place. Now to complete the leveling procedure, we lower the jacks down to the ground. Check the gauges for the level condition of the truck. It should be level from side to side and level from front to back. You access the turntable control console, raise the lid, activate the main power switch, and each of the individual ladder controllers have a locking control function then you activate each controller. The aerial will operate at low idle with one or two functions. Activating a third function will require fast idle position. In the event there are obstacles preventing full extension of the outriggers, the outriggers can be placed in a short jack configuration to avoid obstacles. In this position, 
the aerial has full capacity operation on the other side of the truck where the outriggers are fully deployed for stabilization. When the aerial is in the short jack mode, both the turntable and control consoles will indicate which side is short jack with an indicator light. To activate the aerial control system, you engage the master power switch, maintain pressure on the aerial override switch, and then activate the ladder function. Once the ladder function is activated, the override switch can be released and normal operations can resume on the side of the apparatus where the outriggers are fully deployed. It will automatically deactivate aerial operation if the aerial is attempted to be rotated to the short jack side. First it will go into low speed operation, it will sound an alert, and then it will shut down the aerial system. An optional auto stow system is available. The auto stow system will automatically stow the aerial and apply the proper amount of down pressure. The aerial must be fully retracted within 10 degrees of the aerial cradle and below 20 degrees of elevation. When the aerial auto stow indicator is flashing, you flip open the safety cover and maintain pressure on the auto stow switch. Spartan ERV platform is a highly refined workspace. The platform is engineered and built in separate modules. There's a separate steel modular subframe to support the weight of the platform. And there are separate handrail structures. There's a left rear corner, a right rear corner, and a front center module. These handrail modules are bolted to the subframe. If they're ever damaged in the field, they can be replaced in the field without requiring any cutting or welding in order to reduce downtime and the cost of repair. The Spartan ERV platform includes stainless steel heat shields on the sides, the corner gates, and on the front of the platform to protect occupants against radiant heat. The platform assembly itself has an angular shape to make it more maneuverable around buildings and fire ground obstructions. There are two access gates on each corner, front left and front right, as well as an entry gate, exit gate at the back of the platform with a spring-loaded handrail that opens upward or inward if there are overhead obstructions. The platform includes lighting on telescoping poles, at the back of the platform, and there are several available lamp head options, quartz and LED, both 120 and 12 volt, also 240 volt. There are 12 volt spotlights on the front of the platform, and here again there are several options for different intensities and types of 12 volt spotlights. There's another 120 volt powered quartz light on the front, that could be changed also to an LED fixture. There are additional quartz lights for scene lighting on the underside of the platform. And another telescoping quartz light at the back of the platform. Here again, these can be converted to LED fixtures. There are warning lights on both the sides and front of the platform to illuminate the platform in low light, smoky, or foggy conditions. There are clamps provided on both the left and right side of the platform to secure the rungs of a roof ladder stored inside the fly section of the aerial to secure it to both the left and right sides of the platform structure. Platforms are available with a variety of water manifold options. This platform has a water manifold for dual deck guns. There's an automatic remote control deck gun provided in both positions. These guns have a wireless control capability enabling control of the direction of the stream and the stream pattern from several hundred feet away. In addition to the deck guns, the manifolds provide connections for gated 
discharge outlets, two and a half inch with an inch and a half reducing adapter to extend hose lines in through a window or balcony or rooftop. There are two of the pre-connected outlets on the front of the platform. These have, happen to have a section of short hose attached so that they can use them for a small hand-lined operation. Each of the guns also include control switches at the upper platform station and at the lower turntable station. Either deck gun can be controlled individually. Here you see one gun equipped with smoothbore nozzles and a shaper tube, and the other deck gun is equipped with a master stream fog nozzle, enabling easy changeover from fog pattern to straight stream. In the rear section of the platform floor area, there's a screw mounting base to store the automatic nozzle while not being used. The interior of the platform includes safety belt loops, two at the rear, one at the right, and one at the left. The platform includes rescue stretcher brackets. To secure a rescue stretcher across the side of the platform, and the controls slide over to the side with the stretcher secured in place on the one side of the platform. At the rear of the platform, there are two integrated storage cabinet modules. These storage cabinet modules can facilitate the equipment storage with access from the top or from inside the platform. And these compartments are provided on both sides at the rear platform area. You can specify any number of additional firefighting accessories for installation in the platform. Here you see a spanner wrench set. Here, a six pound pick headed ax. We have 120 volt receptacles supplied in the lower right and left corners of the platform. The breathing air system includes a capacity scale at the platform, two rear mounted quick couplings, a pressure regulator, and two additional quick couplings at the front of the platform. There are two lifting arms provided on the front of the platform on both the left and right sides. The lifting arms have a load rating capacity of 250 pounds and are intended to either hoist material or equipment up to the platform or lower it back from the platform down to the ground. Inside the end of the fly section, there's an illuminated inclometer to tell the operator the angle of the aerial ladder in order to correspond with the load ratings listed on the load chart. The aerial ladder sections are equipped with blue LED ladder illumination lighting to light up the ladder in dark or smoke or fog conditions. Also, the center section of each rung includes a photoluminescent strip that will glow in the dark. The underside of the platform includes four large rubber landing feet for placing the platform on the ground or on rooftops. The underside of the platform is covered with a heat shield. There's an access door in the heat shield for clean out and to access some electrical connections above the heat shield. There's a water curtain protective spray nozzle on the underside of the platform. Two 500 pound capacity lifting eyes are provided on the underside of the platform. The aerial includes a telescopic water system. The telescopic water system delivers water from the onboard fire pump or from an external source. Each of the sections of water pipe are fabricated from extruded aluminum hard coat anodized tubing. The Spartan ERV ladder includes a unique and patented system of roller assisted slide pads. The roller assisted slide pads dramatically reduce the amount of sliding friction between the ladder sections, completely eliminating the need for grease to lubricate the sliding ladder sections. Each of the side rails of the ladder include dual side guide roller assemblies 
to isolate the ladder sections from one another and guide them as they extend and retract. The aerial's range of elevation lets it lower to 10 degrees below horizontal to support rescue in a river, pond, or roadside ditch. The platform can reach downward to 15 feet below grade. The platform offers Stokes basket brackets, sliding aerial controls, and a perimeter step outside the platform. The main ladder lifting cylinders are attached to the side rails of the bed section of the ladder by a massive lifting cradle structure. The lifting cradle structure ties both lift cylinders together so that they lift equally and transmit an equal amount of force into the underside of the ladder. They also keep the cylinders in perfect parallel position so that they lift evenly as well as wear evenly over time.